adjacent to a very handsome 13 amp socket is a suburban station which sits up on the upper level of the layout. The car park actually bridges the lower track and access to the station is via a road with a load of very shiny cars that need a bit of aging in the background. I'm going to use this particular handsome tank engine for the suburban track. Here we are back in Railroad looking at the switchboard and switching over to the dispatcher window looking at this particular view we see a replication with all the blocks numbered in sequence which is actually reflected in the model as well and looking forward to the routes which are actually a connection between a block and somewhere else selecting them highlights them or you can click on them within the dispatcher and it shows it in the list if it's something more complex including points we see three routes actually being selected on the left coming back to the normal view as far as schedules are concerned this is where I'm going to plan a schedule and the easiest way is to use auto train I'm going to select this particular block as the start of my cycle and using the green hour to the left means that I want it to run towards the left hand side in other words anti-cycle and also I want the cycle to finish in the same block so I use the yellow block again over on the left hand side we see a green and yellow combination I can let the software search for a route which is a good way because it actually tests all your connections and looking at it it's fairly satisfactory but there's too many blocks being involved so if I turn it off again and then dictate what blocks I don't want it to use then I can highlight those so one of these tracks is actually an up track one is a down track and when I've thought twice about which way things run I'll select this particular one and say don't use this particular block towards the bottom of the layout is a circular route which I use for express and I don't want it to use that particular block as well so having done that again I can actually instruct it to use some blocks I can let it search and now it doesn't include those particular blocks that I originally highlighted then I can start to specify the details of the actual route itself so I'm going to call this suburban anti-clockwise I'll put in the title cycle 3 so that when I look at it I know that it's going to run three times and underneath I choose which type of schedule I want normal will be from A to B cycle will be continuous shuttle will be backwards and forwards and shunt will be just the side one I'm going to repeat this three times hence the cycle three in the title but I also want to make sure that when the schedule starts there's a series of sound files that I can use to commence at the beginning of the schedule these are really a series of macros which just play out according to what I've set up I've got some as far as the lint are concerned and some as far as steam is concerned if we look at these in detail over on the right I can see I turn on the light then the engine there's a delay there's an announcement of further delay and a whistle on and a whistle off so that's what I want at the start of the schedule I'll add this particular macro to the start of the schedule and I see it listed in the schedule dialog box I'll also add something at the end which is a macro that turns everything off so we have a bit of silence at the end of the schedule and say OK I need to advise the system about what trains can be used I've got a list here of all engines so all engines can actually use this particular schedule 
Here's a list of all my engines and probably most people look at this and say well this is terrible because I can't remember the names of the different classes etc. So they're either steam tank or steam tender and I have to look at them and identify them by the wheel combinations. Rather sad probably. Here's a picture of the engine already assigned and also the length which is important. When we look at the connection it's address 7 and more importantly is the speed profile. Here I set the maximum speed and also the acceleration deceleration which overrides the CV but far more important is the speed profile. If I want engines to accurately stop in middle or end of a, tra of a platform. Looking at this because I've set the maximum speed at 90 uh, we see I've already measured the actual profile and down towards the bottom there's a brake compensation if the flywheel keeps taking the engine beyond where it should stop. Looking also at the various functions, there's a series of functions already assigned. Some are push on push off, some are just toggles um, and these in turn can be operated by the software according to what I want to do. So back in the schedule we're looking now at um, a train window over on the right hand side I could use this to operate uh, the various functions some are turn on so turn off some are just pulses I could use the mouse to control the speed and direction but I can also use the arrow keys left and right to increase or decrease or the up and down arrow keys which are just apply the stop and turn everything off this is the block I want to assign an engine to, so I select it from my list, I'll choose the 464, but I've got to say which direction it's pointing in. And I'd also like to modify this with a series of coaches behind it, so if I go to the other train window and modify the setup, at the bottom of my list I have a series of coaches, five short ones, which I'll add to the control. When we look at the train window, that only ever shows the engine, but above on the monitor block, I can see the combination, also the block where it's parked, and the stop and brake ramps as well. So it's assigned. If I come back to it, if I select it, I see the full length of the train at the bottom of the dialog box that includes the coaches. It's selected, I start the schedule, when I click on it it then plans the route ahead and throws the appropriate points and I can see it's reserved two blocks in advance to make sure things are clear. Leaving the software behind we're transferred back to real life I have to check that there's no blockages on the line and I see my assistant, Luca the Cat, has crept in and decided to plonk himself on the turntable. Or he's sitting there falling asleep controlling the points, obviously not concentrating. And he's bored with the whole affair and totally nodded off. But he does come to life if there's a toot on the whistle and something starts to move. Here's the start of the schedule. The sound file has been played from the macro sequence.
leaving the station it goes across a long bridge, which you notice know, hasn't got any supports at present, and heads into a start at the other side of the layout. And this train is scheduled to stop in the middle of the platform and wait before proceeding on to the next part of the run. scheduled stop is at the halt on the other side of the layout, again stopping in the middle of the platform and because it knows the full length of the train including the engine then it can work out where to stop. Off once more dodgy contact I'm actually going to end the cycle here, otherwise we'll all get bored to tears. Um, I hope you found it of interest and uh, maybe see you again sometime.